This is Felt Recoil. Hey, welcome to the Felt Recoil Podcast. My name is Chris. Across from me, hetero life mate. It's Patrick. Hey, Mag, Yulon, how are you doing this week, sir? Um, I'm okay. Fantastic. Uh, we got a little bit to get to. The Austin bomber is dead, as is the Maryland school shooter, which is good because these children have been marching and demanding safer schools, and a cop in Maryland has proven exactly how we can do that. All that and much more here in just a minute. First, let's talk about this week's charity of choice. It's Folds of Honor, and you can find them at foldsofhonor.org. Since 2007, Folds of Honor has carried forth a singular mission, and that is to provide educational scholarships to spouses and children of America's fallen and disabled service member. Their motto says it best, honor their sacrifice, educate their legacy. More information at foldsofhonor.org. I just read this week, the actual genesis of the Folds of Honor organization. And it goes kind of like this. So um, there was a guy flying a plane, all right? And he's the pilot, and he announces to his passengers that they're carrying the remains of Corporal Brock Buckland. And he asks the passengers on the plane if they would remind staying seated while the casket was deboarded. Uh, And then the pilot, Major Dan Rooney, watches as the corporal's twin brother walks alongside the flag-covered casket to meet his family. And among the family was his young son, Jacob. Uh, So the deceased soldier's son is standing there waiting, watching his father's casket roll towards him. And half the passengers, more than half in the passenger airliner, had ignored the request to please honor the fallen. And so uh, Major Dan Rooney discovered what he describes as a profound responsibility to uh, be committed to spending his life changing the future of America's grieving spouses and children. So he formed Folds of Honor in 2007, and they do really, really good things. He wants to uh, live his life as a civilian as a reminder uh, that it's our duty to honor the sacrifices of those who preserve the freedoms that we really do take for granted. So foldsofhonor.org. Make a donation. We would appreciate it. If you have trouble remembering foldsofhonor.org, just remember feltrecoalshow.com, and it'll be listed there under our charities tab. Okay? All right. So over about the last month, month and a week now, we have heard time and time again from a group of children who would like to have their schools be safer. And their answer to it has been that if we would all just give up our guns, their schools would be safer. And now we find out actually, actually, What keeps schools safer is armed good guys who don't stand outside while children are slaughtered. Looking at you, Parkland. Uh, Deputy there. Okay. All right. Uh, Peterson. That's right. His name slipped my mind for a minute. I'm not good at remembering cowards. Okay. (laughs) Uh, So Officer Peterson, who sat outside the school in Parkland, Florida, while children were slaughtered, uh, this, this cop in Maryland did not. And he has been identified. You can see his picture and congratulate him at uh, facebook.com slash felt recoil show deputy first class blaine gaskell of the saint mary's county sheriff's office was the school resource uh, school resource officer who engaged the school shooter in maryland on tuesday the incident uh left two in, uh, two students injured and the shooter dead the shooter by the way was 17 years old which is very odd because according to federal law you have to be 21 to buy a handgun in south carolina you can own one at 18 if it's gifted to you Correct. But you cannot purchase one across the fruited plain unless you're 21 or older. So we have to ask ourselves, can we pragmatically assess this and agree that raising the legal age to buy a firearm to 21 is now proven a futile effort? Like this, it's, it does nothing, right? Well, and to the point that you keep making, what laws could we enact that will prevent Right. These laws from being broken in the future. There are none, yeah. and he broke several. What? Several. Actually, I saw a list earlier today. I think somebody kind of had like a meme of it or something, and it was... All the laws he broke. It was probably like 25 of them. I mean, a gun's a school-free zone, right? right. I'm assuming that's a federal a law. A gun is a school-free zone? Is that what I said? Yeah. Uh, a school is a gun-free zone all across the nation. Is that right? I would assume that's true. Yeah, that's federal law. Okay, because I know in South Carolina... 
Uh, you, you know, there was a long time in South Carolina, you, if you were pulling onto the campus of a school, you couldn't have a gun on you. But they changed that here. If you have a CWP, you can have the gun in your car. And they basically use what is called logic and said, well, you can't have this burden where if you're diverting to pick your child up from school, you then have to go home, drop your weapon off, and go get your kid. So with a CWP, you can leave it in the car and, uh, and be on campus. But uh, it is, isn't it an interesting thing, though? And we look at this officer in Maryland, uh, Officer Gaskill. I hope I'm saying that right. Gaskill is the name, G-A-S-K-I-L-L. And it's got to be tough because he looks to be, I haven't done any homework on him, maybe 30 years old-ish, 30s, I'd say. Some of the pictures, he looks younger than in other pictures. Um, And then you look at the picture of the kid that he had to shoot, 17, 17. And you think, man, that couldn't have been easy. Like, in the moment, I'm sure it was. Like, in the moment, there's somebody shooting innocent people. You do what you got to do. Evil incarnate is staring you down. You do what you got to do, right? I heard a report on the way over here that said something to the effect of, um, I guess he had started shooting. School resource officer ran outside and hid in a stairwell. Uh, that was a, that was a oh, that last was month story. Parkland. Okay, okay. Uh, confronted him, started giving commands, uh, essentially to put the gun down. Um, at which point the shooter knew he was, he was kind of had and started to turn the gun on himself. Uh, okay. Um, and I think the officer was trying to, I'm, and I'm assuming he was trying to essentially wound him with the shot. Yeah. Uh, but it ended up killing him. What happens, happens at that point. <laughs> well, I mean, kind of already made his bed, right? I'm kind of surprised there's, yeah, you're exactly right. I'm surprised that there's, a, there's not a media outcry for the cop to have shot the gun out of his hand. This is a trained police officer. He should have just shot the gun out of his hand. He didn't have to what kill him. What was the old local guy on the radio, Russ Castle? Oh, man. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah. He's dead. We can't make too much fun of him. Yeah, but he's the guy that said, ah, well, yes. just shoot him in the leg. Yeah, if there was an intruder in his house, he would shoot him in the leg. And then they were like, wouldn't you shoot the femoral artery? And he's like, no, I've trained for that. <laughs> it's like, no, you haven't. That's impossible, you weirdo. Oh, my gosh. Well, he was a he was a hoot. Um. Anyway. All right. So, yeah, maybe... Maybe Russ would have been on the on board uh, team. Shoot it out of his hand. You know that would be the new hashtag. Shoot it out of his hand, <laughs> and uh, all these kids. But it does make you wonder. So now you got all these Parkland, Florida kids starting that right now. By the way, please do let me know. Uh, I'm sure we'll have like three uses of it <laughs> by the time we're done. Uh, <laughs> you have the Parkland, Florida kids who are running around saying, "Let's raise the age limit. Let's get AR-15s off the street." Uh, we have to find a way to make these schools safer. Well, here you go. Here's how you make the schools safer. You arm good people who will act in times of violence and in times of evil, and you ask them to do good and to end the evil, and that's that. It's very, very simple formula. I'm really lost as to how anybody buys into the logic that less guns will mean less crime committed. It just if If, if you say, let's stop producing guns now and we'll smelt them all down and pour it into the sea or whatever. I'm sure they wouldn't because, you know, trees and all that. Whales. Yeah, whales. Uh, and so whatever you do, we bury it six feet deep. We we burn every gun. We don't allow any more production of them. It, it really gives way to this fallacy where they seem to believe that that means every bad guy in the world will suddenly – have to find a different way to carry out carnage, but that's not what will happen. Look at Austin, Texas. This is a bad guy making bombs at home, mailing them around, and blowing up strangers. This, he didn't need an AR-15 hang to do second. what he did. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, sir. So you're blaming the bomber, not the bombs? That is true. Although, uh, I am calling for bomb reform now. Clearly, that's flawed logic, sir. You know, mothers... Because we're supposed to blame the device. You're right. <laughs> Mother Jones is a very far left uh, think tank, quote unquote nonprofit, but they're not. They're very liberal, um, and they did data on um, mass shootings in the United States of America, essentially for my entire life. Uh, I was born in 1981. They started in 1982, and they came to today. 
Now, 819 uh, people killed and 729 wounded in all mass shootings ever since 1982. 819 people. That, my friend, is eight, eight days, eight days of death on America's roadways by accident. Okay? This... This is data of premeditated, plotted murder. And you only get to 819 over 36 years. Accidentally, cars are killing exponentially more people. And still, we can't get Macy off the ground. I, I don't know why. It only makes sense to make all cars illegal. It's got legs. And I, nobody's paying attention. How, how do you think the Austin bomber... Got his bombs to FedEx so they could mail them. And isn't it ironic, by the way? Everybody's pressuring FedEx to, hey, you got to stop shipping guns to people. And there they are shipping bombs. And there they are shipping bombs the whole time. Had no clue. Now, they didn't give in, by the way. They're still shipping guns for gun companies because they make a junk ton of money off of it. But is there a legitimate call now for FedEx to please screen your packages and make sure they're not bombs? Every package needs to be screened. We need common sense bomb reform now. And I don't know why I'm the only person calling for it, but I am. So common sense bomb reform and shoot the gun out of his hand. Let's get those things. Here's trending. something that I actually find funny is that FedEx and UPS actually do screen their packages. Really? And they didn't find it. Whereas uh, due to this thing we have called the Constitution, the USPS cannot screen your packages Mm, because it's government money versus private entities that can do whatever they want exactly not trampling on anybody's rights that makes sense that's interesting so typically they do actually screen packages is my understanding do you remember the time i tried to mail an eotech optic through the ups store and the lady wouldn't do it because it was a gun accessory and she was all but you're but the heat's gonna make the MOA way off. No, no, oh yeah, no, the cold, right? When in the Arctic, what, yeah, whatever. I don't know. And she was like, "Yeah, we don't ship gun accessories." And I said, "Do you, do you ship rope? You walk in here with a strand of rope. Are you gonna ship that? Because you know some people will uh, take rope and make gun slings out of it." She just looked at me like I was a moron, and I was like, "No, you're the moron," and I left. <laughs> And put it in a different box and came back the next day. Uh, yes, that's exactly what happened. Um, true story. Okay, so according to CNN, um, oh, real quick. All right, so that is uh, your Maryland shooting, and it just should prove what Wayne LaPierre said. And can we please, I hate this. I hate to even have to say this. It drives me crazy. As you well know, when somebody steals creativity from someone else, it really drives me up a wall. Uh, to really grind your gears. It does, man. And uh, so can we just please be intellectually honest with everyone? I'm tired of everyone acting like their friend came up with the phrase, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Wayne LaPierre from the NRA said it. He was the first person that anybody ever heard say it, and then it became massively just infamous for every reason. You know, now everybody knows it's part of the vernacular. Please stop acting like your buddy has said that for five years, and so he's the smartest guy you know. Sean Hannity didn't come up with that. Your buddy that says that is also the guy that's like, (laughs) Obama, best gun salesman of the year. (laughs) That's right. Same guy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, So if we could stop acting like we came up with that. Put those on the list of things I'm tired of hearing in the gun store. Uh, Yeah, right? For sure. Somewhere really close to the top. Uh, Probably right alongside of the people that come off the range and they've got like, I don't know, a three and a half foot spread on their target. And they go, well, he's dead. Uh, No, no, he's not dead because you're highly inaccurate. And he ran the other way and you missed the entire time. Why Why does it look like you (laughs) shot it with buckshot? (laughs) Right. Exactly. That's scared, a 380. Scared him. No, no, you did. I mean, maybe you did. You scared him. That's about all you did. <laughs> uh, I was watching a guy the other day. Where was I? I don't remember, but he was doing the whole uh, tooler drill. And he had his target moving at him. And he's doing this thing where he's drawing and he's proving how the, there's a negligible difference between carrying hot and carrying cold. You know, uh, what do they call that? Uh, Israeli carry. Israeli carry. Yeah, but it, some people will call it like code something or the other, by the way. You know what I'm talking about? Condition one. Yeah. That's on a 1911, though, is that right? Or condition three would be 
magazine full chamber empty, I think. Okay. So anyway, all right. He's doing this thing and he's like, look, I got him negligible. And I thought, yeah, but that paper target that was basically at your muzzle when you pulled the trigger wasn't exactly trying to kill you. So no, you're ineffective. You're, you're a little too slow to be trying to, to run that drill. I found that funny. Uh, all right, quick thing. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, right after I tell you this, my boys, by the way, were playing last night. They were playing like with their Batman figures, and my oldest son starts going, Defcon 2, Defcon 2. <laughs> and I thought, I got to stop letting them play Ghost Recon together. Uh, I guess that's where you I don't know where else you get Defcon 2. So I said, hey, do you know what Defcon means? He goes, uh, and then he had something he made up for it. Yeah, it means, you know, run and hide type thing. I said, okay, basically. All right. And then my wife said, why you got to be such a Noah? So I pulled my phone out, and I said, Siri, what does DEF CON stand for? And she said, you know, d- defensive condition, whatever, whatever. And uh, I said, yeah, that's what it stands for. It's, it's something the Army uses. And my wife called me a know-it-all, and I said, no, I had to ask Siri. That means I'm not a know-it-all. <laughs> I thought I was honest. Okay, uh, check this out. We got something cool for you. My wife and I recently signed up for HelloFresh. And HelloFresh is a meal delivery service. If you're not familiar, then uh, I can't help you there. Uh, but basically what they do is you can download the app or you can go to the website, HelloFresh.com, and you get to pick your meals, uh, one, two, or three meals a week. And then you can pick if it's for two or four people each time you get a box full of food. So my wife and I get uh, 12 meals a week, 12 meals a week delivered to our front door and we put the meat in the freezer and the produce in the refrigerator. And over the course of the week, we cook up these meals. Their ingredients are always fresh. Everything is delicious. And you get to cater it to the way you want it. Whatever type of foods you like, they got a lot to pick from. We've been nothing but impressed by HelloFresh. And now HelloFresh is allowing us to give you uh, some free meals. So here's all you have to do. Send an email to HelloFresh, HelloFresh at FeltRecoilShow.com. And the first email that we get asking for the code, we'll send you a code and you'll get your first meals free of charge. You'll just simply log on to HelloFresh.com. You'll use the unique code we will send you. And if you don't get it this time, well, we got more to go. So come back next week on the next episode of the Felt Recall Podcast and we'll have more to give away. But the first person that gets us the email, we'll hook you up with a free box of meals from HelloFresh. That's HelloFresh.com. You can look at the menu, see if you like it, decide if you want to play. But I mean, what's what's to lose? It's uh, free meals for you and the people you love. And they are fun and easy to make. It's uh, not a hard sell once you try it, I promise. Uh, it's a subscription service, but there's no contract. You can cancel at any time. And in fact, you don't even have to cancel. You can just take three weeks off. You can take a week off. You can take two weeks off. If you know you're going to be traveling, just say, hey, pause my deliveries. Don't charge me. And I do want to say this, by the way. In the day and age of bad customer service, we did get a meal this week where the cauliflower, I didn't know that cauliflower can go bad. And I left the cauliflower out um for like the day and then put it in the fridge and it went bad and so i emailed them and i said hey you know the cauliflower uh, i didn't know cauliflower could go bad and they advised it can (laughs) but here's what we're gonna do it's a plant yep absolutely uh but they emailed back and they said hey we're gonna take a little bit off your next delivery uh we're gonna credit you because uh we know you missed out on one of your meals a little bit and we want to make that right so they actually gave us a pretty decent sized credit towards the next meal so that was really really nice of them but uh, also they want to so, give you free so food. they warranty stupid that they do my friend who I, is that uh silencer code that's it we warranty yep. stupid one time yes so all right hellofresh.com you can look at the food how long you been doing Pick this uh, you guys Hello been on Fresh? for a few weeks I, oh yeah we're in probably six weeks now oh wow six okay. to eight weeks yeah I will tell you this: the meat. Lo- See, I'm I'm a fat guy, so I'm I'm not I'm gonna be like not the salmon, nah, not this, not this. But um, we've had the, the meatloaf is amazing. Uh, they do um, burgers that are out of this world. Here's what what you like. What I like about it is, uh, you know, I tend to keep a busy work schedule, as I know you do too. And a lot of times you eat on the run. It's just the nature of it. You can maybe get a good breakfast in. Your lunch is usually sometimes, unfortunately, out of a bag or real quick at the store, wherever it is you can squeeze in during the day. 
but then you come home and there's always there's always a variety to them. I always feel like you get your your good protein, your healthy vegetables, and just a little bit of carbs to go with it if you want that kind of thing. So uh, it's a good, well balanced meal, and we'll give it to you for free. You'll get your first meals for free from the Felt Recall Show podcast. Just send an email to hellofresh at feltrecoilshow dot com. The first one we get, we'll hook it up. All right, okay. Uh, all right, the Austin Bomber. So, if you're not aware, uh, basically you had... How old was the Austin Bomber, Hulon? I can't remember. Now I'm trying to find it. He's 21? Am I remembering uh, that right? Yeah, I think he's early 20s. All right. So, according to CNN, as the Austin Bomber sensed that authorities were closing in on him on Tuesday night, he took out his cell phone and recorded a 25-minute video confessing to building the explosive devices. That's terrifying. He didn't explain why he targeted his victims. Instead, the interim Austin police chief uh, says it's just the outcry of a very challenged young man talking about challenges in his life that led him to this point. I know everybody is interested in a motive and understanding why, and we're never going to be able to put a rationale behind these acts. I don't. Did Ted Kaczynski, did they ever have like a motive for Ted Kaczynski, or was he just an anarchist who lived... You know, he basically, if you're not familiar, the Unabomber had a shed that was in the woods behind his house, and he would go out in this shed and tinker, and then mail packages places, and they blow up and people open them. But did he did he target specific people that you remember? Was it the federal government? You know, was he a... Uh, the Unabomber uh, was so named because he targeted universities. Uh. And I think... Uh, the A in Una was uh, airlines initially, so he was he was targeting, um, I think higher education and aeronautical, uh, commercial aeronautical companies. <clears throat> ah, and interesting. I, I think he was very much anti technology, and uh, thought that it was a, uh, it would be essentially the downfall of society, and that we needed to get back to our roots and sort of. Uh, live more like a sort of a, almost like a frontier type of lifestyle. All right, I'm reading this. <clears throat> You're very smart. Um, I mean, you know, this I is uh, on WashingtonPost.com. I didn't realize this. Uh, there's text of the 30, 35,000 word manifesto that Kaczynski submitted to the Washington Post and the New York Times. Um, they say it was submitted by the serial mail bomber called the Unabomber. The manifesto appeared in the Washington Post as an eight-page supplement that was not part of the news section. Well, there's a problem. Don't do that. If a madman says, hey, can you get my message out to the people, don't do it. Right? Okay. Well, and this is not in his defense, but they did that because he said that if they did not post it, uh, that he would essentially ramp up his efforts. Yeah, the author threatened to send a bomb to an unspecified destination with intent to kill unless one of the newspapers published this manuscript. But he's already killing people. I mean... And had been doing so you know for several years. That's like me saying to my wife, I'm going to tell you this right now. If I don't have a hot meal every time I come home, I'm going to stop folding laundry. And she'd go, you already don't fold laundry. And i go, Right. I'm going to stop folding. I'm going to fold less right, laundry. So what I'm saying is more donuts. <laughs> right. Uh, and yeah, he basically go uh, the Industrial Society and its future, and the introduction reads, the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. So he was just crazy. He was just crazy. Maybe the Austin Bomber's the same way. Um, I'm not going to say his name. So he made the video. His strings of bo uh, package bombs killed two people and wounded five in Texas. The video was found on a cell phone. Hours after he made the video, police found him leaving a hotel. They followed him until they made a move to stop him from getting on an interstate. And then he ended up in a ditch and he killed himself with his last explosive device. Federal agents went to his home Wednesday uh, while police interviewed his roommates, attempting to determine whether any bombs remained and if he acted alone. Uh, they think they have accounted for every bomb he made. He lived in a city just outside Austin. Officers detained and questioned his two roommates. Neither person is under arrest. Um, he's been charged. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's dead. With one count of unlawful possession. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeez Louise, man. We're so stupid as a society sometimes. Let's go ahead and charge him with unlawful possession of a bomb. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, no more bombs found. So hopefully uh, it's over and done with. 
So authorities tracked him to the hotel about 20 miles north of Austin. They identified him using receipts, internet searches, witness sketches, and ultimately surveillance video from what appears to be a FedEx location. Um, Which is kind of comical if you look at it. He's got a hat on. He's got a blonde wig. He's wearing gloves. And he's acting like a complete weirdo. Maybe trying to act like a commercial... uh, Delivery guy of some sort. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. You know, he's trying to disguise himself. Um, but like anybody's buying that wig. Right. Uh, he looks like uh, Garth from Wayne's World. <laughs> he actually kind of does. That's pretty Shoo-wing. funny. wing <laughs> uh, Don't these guys make you wonder, though? Like, Especially as a parent, it makes me worried and wonder. Like, How, how do you miss all the signs of a guy that's mailing bombs to people? You're his... L- listen... I've had weird roommates, okay? I remember having a roommate. Haven't we all? <laughs> I remember having a roommate uh, who, who Talking was... to you, Joey. My brother. <laughs> Talking to you. Uh, that's why you won't. Is that the one that cuts hair now? No. Oh, okay. I figured maybe there was a reason you wouldn't get close to him with scissors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just makes you wonder, how are people... How are you missing this? You're the guy's roommates. Maybe you're not friends at all. You just happen to live together. That'd be weird, I guess. But um, as a parent, I look at it and I think, well, how do I make sure this doesn't happen to my kids? So I, I, you know, I just tend to do this thing where no matter what's going on, whether they think they're in the wrong or they think they're in the right, I'm like, just tell me, just tell me, because I want them to understand that I believe that if something bad is happening. They actually have an obligation to snuff it out as quick as possible, right? So if there's a bully on the playground, I don't want you to come home and tell me about the bully. I want you to go over and tell him to stop bullying people. And if he doesn't, smack him in the mouth till he does. And then everybody goes, oh, violence isn't the answer. Right. And I'm not telling them that's the only resolution. But what I'm telling them is if that is what it comes down to and you have to use force of action against somebody to stop them from the violence they're perpetuating against innocent people, then do it and do it fast. Do it and stop it. Makes sense. That's a Chris Kyle uh, way of thinking there. Sometimes violence is the answer. Yeah, absolutely right. And if you don't agree with Chris Kyle, you're basically a Bernie Sanders supporter. Or Hillary, or Obama, or any other leftist in America who likes terrorists. Um, What? Or a big fan of Saddam. (laughs) Right? What a mad, crazy world we live in. Um, all right. So anyway, uh, this kid basically, uh, drives his car into a ditch and then blows himself up. Um, mixed reviews. Some people are saying, you know, we, we would have never seen it coming. Uh, other people say it was an odd kid. Didn't you say his roommate called him a dork, right? His uncle. Uncle. Oh, okay. Uncle said he was a computer geek and a nerd. So strange. So strange. Just makes you wonder. Uh, how you miss the signs. It makes you wonder, again, as we've said, what is the world coming to where this is what people are using to solve their problems? This isn't a kid who was a victim of any sort. Maybe he'd created that in his head. But basically, I think, and it, and maybe I'm speaking too soon. It'll be interesting to see if there's ties between him and the people that he mailed the packages to. Doesn't seem that's the case yet. Apparently, he didn't indicate so in his uh, confession. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like he was just sending them out randomly. Just randomly. So strange. So strange. All right, here's our uh, Voda of this week. <laughs> Guys, talk about... All right. So here's what would happen in this scenario. Actually, let me tell you a story, and then I'll ask you how you would ha- handle this scenario. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, this is from foxnews.com. An Ohio couple has been caught having sex in front of kids at a playground. Frisky couple shocked young children at a school playground in Ohio when they reportedly got too playful themselves. Oh, clever, clever. Uh, Jacoby Schmidt and Ashley Corelli, 23 and 22 respectively, were allegedly caught Sunday afternoon, the Lord's Day, having sex within view of nearly a dozen kids at Walker Elementary School in Canton, Authorities said they received a 911 call. That, and that, this is where I take issue. Someone called 911 to say the couple had exposed themselves to the kids and numerous adults while having intercourse. When deputies arrived, the pair continued to fornicate. And uh, Corelli repeatedly bared her breasts to witnesses. 
Uh, so they had to have been high as kites. That's all I can imagine. The couple told authorities they didn't know they couldn't have sex near the elementary school and claimed <laughs> they claimed they were not aware. It's a Dave of, Chappelle defense. Right. I didn't know I couldn't do that. <laughs> Uh, they weren't aware they had an audience. So here's the thing: <laughs> Are you real? So you're at the playground with your kids. Let's just let's pretend you have children. Let's pretend you have young kids in your extended family somewhere, and you take them to the playground. All right. And you notice this dude and his chick going at it. All right. Is it going to continue until the cops get there? Or are you going to go over and stop it? Uh, by any yeah, means necessary. I have to, well, I mean, maybe not by any means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see what if you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there would probably be an intervention of sorts. I mean, I, I, what person? I, I'm actually having a little trouble wrapping my head around this one. <laughs> We've had some pretty solid votas, but this is kind of like next level. So last night. I didn't know about this one. Full disclosure before you said it. So. Right. This one's a little, caught little, a little hard off to take. guard. So my wife uh, has this new habit of flipping through the uh, digital antenna channels. She likes to watch the local TV, right? And she's flipping through last night, um, and she stumbles across a network called Bounce. And it looks like this cheesy 90s soap opera, and it's these two people making out, right? And uh, I go... Yeah, I mean, if you want to leave it on that and then go upstairs in a minute, I'm cool with that. And, you know, like like that. And uh, <laughs> she goes, you're so gross. Like that. I said, what? What? It's supposed to warm me up, you know? And uh, she laughed and told me to go away. And so that's, you know, normal night in Chris's life, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I do. Uh, but so there is, you know, there's this switch in guys that girls don't have where really when you're into a girl, you do kind of, just walk around all the time being like, so what can I do to impress her? Whether it's impress her with my physical acumen, which doesn't happen in my case, <laughs> or my wit or banter or wisdom or whatever the case may be, you're are you always... Gonna, are you going to name something that works? I don't have one. Okay. I'm out. Just I just want to uh, <laughs> Just <laughs> uh, whatever it is you think you can impress her with, you're just constantly looking to impress your lady, right? And uh, and then sometimes you're trying to set that mood, and, and you want to go, now I have impressed you, I've courted you, as it were, and now I will set the mood. So hence the take her to a nice dinner and come home, and the candles are lit, and there's flower petals, this whole romantic idea of, well, now, now she's going to be into me. I don't know where taking her to the public park to watch the kids play comes into that. Like, what? I feel like there was probably like meth involved. Somewhere. <laughs> it has to be right. It had to have just been high as kites. But is meth an aphrodisiac? <laughs> I don't. Ah, uh, just the smell makes me randy. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> of the meth, yeah. Nothing like a little yeah. smoking some battery acid, yeah. you know. Yeah, I imagine one day they'll look back and tell their grandchildren. I just remember me and Pappy used to cook some meth and then go down to the park and watch the kids play and then make sweet love. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, no, it's kind of weird if you think that we left the park, actually. We stayed in the sunshine. We were uh, right over by the swings. And then the kids just like, well, I'm, I'm okay to just die now. Um, anyway, all right. So I can't decide if the couple is the voter or the person that thought, well, I'll just call 911 and let them handle it. Can we please get better as a society at just solving problems ourselves immediately? Just do it. It's not going to happen. If it needs to be done. It's not going to happen. I think it could. And I think sometimes you just got to set the example. It's like anywhere you've ever been where you see someone do wrong and someone has called them out on it. You always take the person's side that calls well, them sure, out. Sure, it's on that it. mob mentality, right? Yeah. So sometimes people are afraid to act until someone else does, and then all of a sudden it's the, yeah, what he said. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That'll be me, just going around slapping one couple out of public <laughs> intercourse at a time. <laughs> um, the old intercourse ending bandit. That's what they'll call me. <laughs> I look forward to it. I'm pretty sure that's uh, already what you're called. Yeah. <laughs> uh, AKA dad bod. All right. Uh, we'll call that that. Don't forget. 
Email HelloFresh at FeltRecoalShow.com. You can get some free meals on us. And visit Folds of Honor. Find them, visit them, and uh, give them a donation. They're educating the youth uh, of America's finest. So please do that. We'll see you next time for episode number 71 of the Felt Recoil Podcast.